Four players, right? Barstool Sports. We got a lot to get to, all kinds of live golf stuff. I'm hearing rumors. Phil, Ricky, Kevin Na released a statement. But first and foremost, we have to talk about quite the conundrum that the four play crew is in, where we decided to do a live show at the Wilbur Theater Monday, a week from uh, today. We're recording from, you know, six days from now, if you're listening to the show on Tuesday. A uh, live show from the Wilbur US Open, Boston. Barstool's founded a Boston great idea. Turns out just the Boston Celtics are going to be playing an NBA Finals game on Monday night as well. And so, yeah, I mean, it were, yeah, that fucking sucks. For being well, so we were, we were, obviously we didn't know this was going to happen when we planned the Wilbur show. We didn't know the Celtics were going to make a run to the NBA Finals. And then sucks. game one. Don't it does. Play. And then game one happened. The Celtics won. And at that point, we're rooting for a sweep because it's game five Monday when we're at the Wilbur, June 13th. And then last night, the Warriors kicked the shit out of the Celtics. So it's 1-1. So now there's definitely going to be a game five. And we are going to be at the Wilbur on June 13th. I th- the only good thing is that it is in Golden State, the game, and it starts at 9 o'clock. That gives us a little bit of room. But, yeah, it's not an ideal situation oh, for the that's boys. that's amazing. That's fine. Okay. It's yeah, an away game. News. I didn't know that it was going to start at 9 o'clock. What time's our show start? Uh, what, Kind of whenever we want. We also got Kirk. Kirk Minahan, Kevin Kizzer are going to join the show. Kirk has um, uh, his son's playoff baseball game. So the earliest he can get to the Wilbur is like 8 or 8.15, um, which should be fine. So I think it's going to be really close. I was worried the game was going to be at like 7. And we are going to be completely. Well, fun. yeah. I mean, that's that's great breaking news, Trent, that the game is going to be at nine o'clock at night on the East Coast. I mean, most people on a Monday night will either watch it at home or they'll like go to their low. I mean, I don't think anyone's getting that crazy on a Monday night at nine o'clock going into the one o'clock in the morning times. You know, it's start. It's a late start. I know it's the finals, but I think we're in a good spot here where people can do the to do our show. Watch Kevin Kisner speak in front of a thousand people, which will be hilarious. And then. Go and watch the finals. Go watch your team win an NBA championship. What a Monday that'll be. I mean, it's not like you have to get to the game. You just got to get in front of a TV at the end of the day. I thought for sure we'd be running side by side alongside the NBA finals. I'm like, what the fuck? I bet you there's a lot of people that have yet to pull the trigger on buying these tickets thinking that they would miss the NBA finals game if they went to the Wilbur. And I think that's incorrect at this point. I like that, Frankie. Frankie positivity right now with a good little spin right there. It's a great night to be a a boss. You got to get in front of a TV. It takes two seconds. It takes two seconds to get in front of a TV. Big. Will our podcast become basketball guys for the night? Will we be yeah, maybe we'll even throw the pregame on somewhere behind us. Yeah, you get exactly. like Chuck That's and the boys I getting yeah. out on the screen. I will wear a Celtics jersey if I have Same. it. That's what it's going to do. I got no I basketball allegiance whatsoever. Seas, history, Boston. I'll I'm rock a Knicks fan. I can't jersey. do that. But yeah. It's okay. As long as we can sell fucking tickets, I don't care. So make sure you go buy your tickets because we're going to have Kirk. We're going to have kids. We're all going to be there. It's going to be fucking amazing. We're probably going to bring up. Some other special guests, if we're being honest with one another. We're going to make it a full foreplay show and experience. It's going to be at the U.S. Open. There's going to be a, the best golfers in the world are going to be within miles of us. Kiz is going to be there. Kirk, everybody. So make sure you go buy your tickets. Um, we got to play about uh, talk about Play Golf Myrtle Beach, uh, boys. And then we got a lot of live to get to because uh, in terms of the announcement of the field and everything that's going on this weekend, we haven't really had a full discussion. We had a brief kind of uh, mention of it on last week's show right after it came out, but we haven't actually had a full discussion. There's been more in terms of the rumor mill on that. Uh, more is the theme of Myrtle Beach because it's the golf capital of the world. Uh, everything you could ever want to do, Myrtle Beach has it. You go to MyrtleBeachGolfWeekend.com, chat live with a golf nut. They're going to help you plan your trip. Um, golf Trek, all right? You pick a golf course. Planning a golf trip could be hard, but the golf nuts from Golf Trek – can help you. These guys have more than 100 years of golf experience and booked more than 1 million rounds in Myrtle Beach. Golf Trek features a team of golf nuts who will get you exclusive rates. That's right, exclusive rates for Myrtle Beach courses and make sure you and your buddies have the trip of a lifetime. You visit uh, MyrtleBeachGolfWeekend.com, chat live with a golf nut. Nothing on earth better than a golf trip with the boys, with the girls, with a mix, with a with a uh, couple couples, maybe you do a couple couples, whatever it is, Myrtle Beach has literally everything that you could possibly want in a trip is at Myrtle Beach. So you should. Yeah, I'm, ex- I'm excited to get down there. I actually have not been there. You two went down there earlier this year. Um, I haven't gone down there, but we're doing a travel series down there. So I'm excited to get down there. Obviously, I've been hearing about Myrtle Beach my whole life, how it's the golf capital of the world, golf trip capital of the world. So I'm excited to get down there and experience it for myself. Myrtle 
It's going to be a blast. Blast in the sun. Fun in the sun. Um, just you know, anytime you go to a beach town when you got all these, you know, wave runners and and hula hooping and mini golfing. It's just a it's a it's a playground for adults and there's a lot of golf there. So I'm really excited for it. I can't wait. You go to MyrtleBeachGolfWeekend.com. You chat with a golf nut. They're going to help you plan your trip to the golf capital of the world. Um other programming notes, Breaking 90 is off and running. Hot start for Breaking 90. Really hot start. Trent, Tillery, the best duo on the internet, the most wholesome content in golf, in the in the golf internet YouTube video space. Um, I feel like Tillery feels pretty positively about your chances here, Trent Ryan. He definitely does. Um, yeah, the video's out. Breaking 90, the first episode. Um, Quarter milli already on YouTube. Ooh, What's that? Nubbies. Quarter milli already on YouTube. Three yeah, days in. Nubbies. Only been out for a couple of days. People, well yeah, deserved. people have been very nice. I appreciate all the support. People are excited that it's back. I'm excited that it's back. Um, you know, we we did the lesson. I was down there. Now we just start playing rounds. You know, a lot of me and Frankie probably going out there trying to get this thing done. But yeah, if you haven't watched it yet, please do. Um, I think. And somebody else can step in and if they know. But I think we're going to do every Thursday if we can. It's, it came out on last Thursday. I think the second episode's coming out on Thursday. And then we're just going to keep hitting Thursdays from there on out unless we have some travel stuff. But the plan is, because I know we're going, we're going to Scotland. We're doing all this crazy shit. But the plan going forward is every Thursday, put out an episode until we do it. And I, I believe next this Thursday in two, two days. Yep. Two days. In two guys. days. Um, will be your first attempt. We went to C Wayne Golf Club, Country Club here in Hewlett, in uh, in the south southern region, uh, southern region of Long Island. Southern first time I've region. ever been there. First time I've ever been there. Southern region of Long Island has that ever been described? That way? Dude, it's way south down there. It's down by JFK. It's right there on the water. No, it's usually just like South Long Island, South Shore. We usually call it. <laughs> but um, I love this golf course. I think that we're hitting courses that not only do you want to watch Trent break 90 on, but like these places are unbelievable. Like we, we've Sea Wayne is a ridiculously nice golf course and Trent, like, well, we'll just, you guys are going to have to watch and see what, what happened. It might be a short series, boys. Like this guy's actually really ripping the golf ball. I'm hitting it really well. He's hitting it so good. I really love it. well. I'm also, I'm also, I don't, I'm also moving to Long Island. So I'm going, oh, I'm yeah. Really getting a Breaking ton of news. golf. Wow. In. I, I'm in. I'm officially in. Like I'm my name is down on paper to move to Long Island. So I'm gonna be out there. I'm gonna be practicing more. It's here's the thing. When we did this last year, I just every time Frankie and I played, I would I live in Manhattan and I would just it's a bit of a grind to get out to Long Island. It's not so bad. You can take a train, you can take an Uber. But this way, once I'm just out there, I can just play and it'll be way easier. So it's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a lot of fun this time around. It was fun last time, but this is gonna be great. Um, um, and yeah, I actually went to go see, I went to go look at apartments with Trent. It was like, uh, like I was his like little brother or something to go check it out. I mean, property I was pros, photos. you guys were doing it was, thing. yeah, it was crazy, but he got a great spot, brand new building right by the ocean. I mean, it's uh Trent, Trent Ryan's going to be living. He's going to be absolutely living. He's out here on long Island. I just, it's going to be a nice clean reset out in the suburbs. You're out of that fucking hell hole in New York city. It's going to be a good time. We're gonna play a lot of golf. Yeah. Guy's just going to break 90. That's just what's going to happen. Uh, okay. Live golf. So last week it was announced and Trent was trying to break 90. Uh, Frankie's trying to fix his brain. Uh, classics. We got shit going all over the place. So we're able to huddle up, regroup, talk about it. Last week, uh, live golf released the field. 42, I believe, of the 48 uh, person field was released. The biggest bombshell was Dustin Johnson. RBC came out uh, right away and dropped them. Uh, Royal Bank of Canada. There's uh, some seriously interesting ties there because Wayne Gretzky is obviously his father-in-law. Wayne Gretzky is like the king of Canada. So Royal Bank of Canada dropping DJ. I imagine that didn't go over particularly well. But Dustin Johnson rumored to get $125 million at least. Um, and he jumped. He clearly or obviously had four months before, three or four months before, uh, announced his loyalty, pledged his allegiance like he was in you know second grade and it was the beginning of the day, pledged his allegiance to um, the PGA Tour and then just does a quick reversal and is going to play and is going to be the highest ranked player, the sort of uh, flagship staple name on the Live Golf Tour. I gave my thoughts. Curious what you guys think about the entire move by DJ. 
as it stands right now, we're recording on Monday, June 6th. Has the PJ Tour said anything? I feel like I haven't seen anything. Not that I know of. All right. That's interesting. I, I'm Everyone is kind of waiting on what they're going to do. My general thoughts on DJ doing this, it's all hindsight now, but like if there was one guy who, like we talked a lot about leading up to this, like legacy and PJ tour and like what it means to be a member of that. And like, you know, we had the Memorial last weekend and Jack's there and that's a big part of it. Like a new golf league isn't going to have those types of stops where you get to shake Jack Nicholas's hand at the end of a tournament. If you win, if there's one guy on tour who might not care about that, if you had to guess it's Dustin Johnson, like he's, he kind of seems like a guy who wants to make as much money as he can. And then, you know, one day just retired to the Bahamas or something. It's, he doesn't, obviously he, you know, he's won a couple majors now and he's very into that, but it, it seems like if there was one guy at the top of the food chain who's kind of like, nah, who's the opposite of a guy like Rory, hindsight now it's probably DJ. So while very, very, very surprising to see a name like that, we thought we were only going to see the Richard Blands of the world filling that entire tournament. So seeing DJ there was a shock. But if you really start to think about it, he's the one guy who would be most likely to make a jump like this. That's what yeah, I think. I would say, I think you're right, Trey. I think to your point, DJ, this is actually DJ's greatest opportunity to benefit from his years and years of giving the media nothing. Like, yeah. Because they just don't expect a lot from his brain, right? People talk behind the scenes, Dustin Johnson's just an idiot. We've gotten to spend time with him. We think he's more just, I don't want to say calculated, but he just doesn't give more than he needs to give. Um, and this was his, this is sort of his opportunity to really cash in on that because Phil, who's always supposed to and trying to be the smartest guy in the room, people are like, no, no, you're aware of these things. He called them like bad motherfuckers and all that. DJ, everyone's like, oh, he's just in La La Land. Like, of course he took $125 million. Right. 100%. Yeah, hindsight is definitely 2020 in this situation. It's just normal now that DJ is playing in the live invitationals. Like, we know it. We live in a world in which DJ now is no longer playing in PGA live Tour in events. World. Yep. And, uh, yeah, no, it's just uh, I don't know that you thought I, – like, Trent, I feel like you wouldn't have thought that the second you saw the first tweet. It was it was bombshell news. You're like, holy fuck, Dustin Johnson. It's like, that's just as – crazy as it gets i mean it's he's one of the biggest names in all of golf the fact that they got him over there is stunning now it's just like kind of normal because it's just been a week there's now new names being rumored obviously phil so danny rapaport says that like the last spot has not been filled yet and he spelt it with a ph um so i'm assuming that like all, all you know everything's pointing towards phil filling up that 48th spot and now all of a sudden ricky fowler's name's going getting thrown around the ring so i mean they're I will say this that I actually think Dustin Johnson and then Taylor Gooch were the mo were the more uh, Gooch to me was so much more stunning than anything else. The guy just won. He's so young. He's in the crew of all these guys that are like grinders on the PGA Tour. Then they're all like a part of this like f like friend group. And I was just leaving them to go make a shit ton of money over it and live. That one was stunning to me because I thought he'd be like an up and coming star. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of Gooch. Yeah, he's recently. like Max Homa's best friend. Yeah, it, it was stunning. It was truly stunning. It's crazy, though. I mean, like, Kevin Na, but then I get it from every different perspective. Like, James Piet, it's like, if you're a young kid, you can just go ensure that you're going to get paid to work on your golf game. I mean, yeah, does it maybe, you know, look bad on different levels, but does it ensure, like, financial success for yourself and, like, guarantee you some certain point? So, it, I don't know. It, it's... Looking back on it, it's, it's tough to argue a lot of it. It's very tricky lines for sure. It is. Well, think about uh, Max Homa going back when he won this year and being like, I remember the days when it was $18,000 in a full year. Totally. And I just couldn't like live anymore. Like I just like had no money and it's just an absolute grind. And these guys are looking at that being like, I just I don't have, don't to, do have to do that. Right. And that, right. well, that's a really hard decision. And like, I honestly don't knock any of them for doing that part of it. Right. Like there's obviously all these other parts that come with it but like if you're just trying to just secure your life and your brand and your family's life i mean you've given your whole life to this game and you're just trying to get something out of it and someone's giving like, you something out of the game that you play they're just like yeah we're just gonna take my, that they, they deserve it they deserve money they're fucking the best in the world if well, smiley coffin could go back i'm sure he would take the money and run and he'd still be playing golf 
and like trying to figure out his game with guaranteed money. I mean, to like Trent's question, the PGA Tour is in a tricky spot because guaranteed money is in every other league and golf was always this free market, put up or shut up. And that world is changing fast. And I can't wait to see like even what Augusta says to DJ. Like, are they well, going to say no more? And Rory, the guy who's been the most outspoken anti-live golf guy in the world, had a quote last week. I don't have it in front of me, but it basically saying what you guys are saying. Like there are, it's hard to speak from a place of, I'm just trying to make money and survive out here. Rory said, I'm in a different place. I don't play golf for money anymore. But if I'm looking back at the times before all of this success and all of this fortune came my way, you really can't knock somebody who is really just grinding out there to be like, all right, I'm going to take this money. So even if even a guy like Rory is saying that, there's clearly some validity to it. Yeah, I, you know, I think, look, the the elephant in the room is everybody wants to clearly be on the right moral side. Even everybody judging, everybody talking, everybody sitting around a bar or a 19th hole can obviously understand the atrocities that go on under the Saudi regime are horrific and that blood money and sport washing, which we've discussed at length. But in terms of the elephant in the room, in my opinion, everyone also thinks, I think, to a degree of like, um, you could really argue that a lot of people are bad, that the PJ Tour is played in China, that and call it what about isn't call it whatever. People are kind of just need to look out for people. People kind of just need to look out for numero uno and their family and their financial you know, future and stability. And I think that almost everyone on on many, many levels can understand being like, yep, I'm gonna play less events, I'm gonna make way more money, and I'm gonna play against worse players. That's a great deal. I'm fucking in. I think everybody can understand that. And again, why I think DJ gets more of a pass from the media than a Rory or even a Taylor Gooch, to be honest with you. Like, I feel like Taylor Gooch is almost like you're saying. He almost seems like if he's tight with Max and that crew, that he's almost more aware of kind of the the surroundings in the media and the um, the discourse and, and uh, or the discord and the public kind of discussion than DJ is. DJ's just living in his own world. He's on his boat. He's doing his wedding with Paulina. It's great. I'm going to make $125 million. Hit golf ball here. Go follow it. Hit golf ball there. Great. And then other people that are a little bit more complex get more shit, I think, than DJ. But we all understand, dude, money talks. That's our scoring system. That's the point system that this whole world has agreed to use. And if you have more of it, you can just do whatever the fuck you want in life. It is shitty that what the live and what the Saudis were trying to accomplish is already happening. And I can feel it with myself. Like it's been a, you know, a week or so that DJ decided and all these guys decided to play there. And it already feels a little quote unquote normal. And that's like, that's what they've wanted. That's the whole point of this thing, in my opinion. So that's shitty. And it's it, to your point, Riggs, it is, everybody always looks out for themselves at the end of the day. That's what's going to happen to take a stand and be like, I'm not going to join this, golf league because of such and such reasons that's definitely the hard thing to do if you just if you want to be like i'm not doing that i'm not going to take this money because i know what it, it comes with that's the harder thing to do the easier thing to do is to just take the money and be like i'm looking out for number one it's a very complicated issue but i i, I don't think like I, it's i think what they want to accomplish the saudis and the live golf league it's already happening so i don't know like Dustin Johnson definitely breaks that barrier where this is a thing that's happening. So people are already, their brains are already processing, oh, this is a golf league that people are involved in. And now that ball's already rolling down the hill. So I don't know. I don't know what happens now. Like It's just hard to ask of one person, in my opinion, one person to try and change the world by deciding on where he's going to play a golf event. I'm, I'm so like, with I, you. I, I think at the it. end of the day, I think a guy like Dustin Johnson's like, even if I take this stand and like, deny 125 million dollars you know the whole world's going to still be buying oil from the saudis they are like the biggest oil reserve in the world we are funding the saudi regime like the whole entire world is funding them that that's what's happening like we continuously keep doing it because that's the way the world works you just have to do it so like dustin johnson's looking at this being like if i don't play this golf event and don't make 150 million dollars like is anything going to change i I don't like and it's really shitty and fucked up to think about it that way but we all have to just like kind of just look at things normally and be like yeah you know what like that's not changing the only thing i don't like about that logic is like all right if everything's bad let's just keep making things bad like 100 point i get like, that but it's hard for one golfer to make that stand because i don't no, know, I know. That if, 
My point with the, I agree with you, but my point is that I don't think golfers are the ones that are changing the Saudi regime and all the atrocities that they're doing against like gay people and journalism, like journalists. It's like that that that's for somebody else. And I understand that Dustin Johnson could move yeah, us but in you're a direction. Being, but you're being used to normalize it if you're if you're I agree. get that. I get that. Like I you're, just, you're 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 admi- you're you're in allowing yourself to be used to normalize it so that people say Oh yeah, it's not that bad in Saudi Arabia. They host golf events and Dustin Johnson plays over there. So you are like conscious that you are allowing them to do that. You are. I get that. I'm just saying that when you're thinking about each situation in a vacuum about like personal, what you're supposed to make a decision for yourself, like Taylor Gooch decided that it's better for him to do that than it is for him to take a stand because he doesn't see the positive on the other side of it, even affecting anyone if Taylor Gooch says, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not doing that. All I'm saying, and that's right, but each... Every little bit is a small step in either direction, right? It's either you're going towards it or you're going away from it. I get that. Oh, they're golfers. What does it matter? Like, there's so many bad things in the world that all the bad things are going to keep happening. But that the way that that happens is progress is small and it's little steps. It's not wholesale changes. These these regimes don't come into power because they just that's how it happens. It's be it's little it's little agreements all the way through that make it to a larger agreement. And now we're just, I get that it's tough to ask a Dustin Johnson or a Taylor Gooch to be the tip of the spear to take a stand and be like, I'm not doing this. But just they, them agreeing to take that money is just a little bit further. And it's a little bit further. And listen, I people look out for who they are and number one at the end of the day, but the more those little steps happen, it's it's not going to change anything, even if they wanted to. I that's that's my whole point. I get they're not going to Justin Johnson saying I'm not playing in the Saudi Golf League. That's not going to change that regime. But him agreeing to play is certainly not going to change that regime either. Right. I mean, it's everybody's just like prioritizing what's important to them, and like it's yeah. so it's so we all right. Like financially is higher than like doing good, and so like if you really have to stack rank those things to yourself. They're really hard because at some point you're like, yeah, I want to do good. I want to make money. Like those are, you know, up at the top. Well, now rank them one and two and like, all right, I'm going to take money over that. And then to Trent's point, it's like, yeah, if you find if it's very hard to build a wall with a million people to like vote with your dollars and how you work to like Frankie's point, it's like, yep, everybody's just buying. Oil, so I'm going to just going to keep going that way. And then if I take a stand, do I screw myself out of that 120 million? So how do you get that whole front to basically make the stand and say, we're not going in that direction? And that's like impossible when you look back at mankind. There's always somebody that falls or is like, you know what? Frankie's the guy that like may, like killed the person. Blame everything on him. You know what I mean? Somebody always falls well, it makes and that takes the money. It makes the person on the other side that much more impressive, like the activists and the people that actually make change happen. Right, the recruitment. When you think yeah. about like how you actually get change to happen, it's so much more impressive when you see something like this go on. Because all of us, we have four brains here. We're all just like talking about this thing that's happening in the world. And we're like taking both sides kind of. Like we don't know like what the right – we know what the right decision is, but we don't know what the easy decision is. And like you don't know what you would do in that situation. And then all of a sudden you have these like – handful of people in humanity that have somehow figured out how to just like withstand all that and then have it work because how many people how many people have tried to do like what we're asking of taylor gooch and then no one gives a fuck about that person and then that taylor gooch type person just didn't make any money and their life was never better and like they just went on and then now they're in the dirt in some cemetery that me and trent right. think that we shouldn't have cemeteries anymore because you're just burying people in the ground it's fucking psychotic but well, yeah no, it's but like I, it's I crazy argue- you're just done I would argue there's no change happening because like it, we're continuing to go down the same path, right? Like these people are just going to get paid by the side around we go. It's crazy. Like, real change would be like Frankie Borelli steps up and like leads the masses of people to not spend, invest in Saudi golfers. Nobody interact. It's like, how do you do that? You know, like you fight for the mom and pop stop shorts, uh, mom and pop store. And it's like pushing against Walmart and the big box store. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Right. How do you, and then like somebody's like, you know what? I'm just going to go to Walmart and spend 
82 cents on right. a package of oranges instead of going to mom and pop where it's 7.99 and it's like you fall and you make these little graces it's like oh it's i feel just, a little cheap we gotta like come today up. i feel a little bit more broke i'm just gonna go there and then my own tesla my own tesla company and like we have to just be like we don't have to be oil like dependent we don't have to be dependent on oil anymore and then i'll just like come up with that and then guys can start can golf in the pga tour again so i'll work on that <laughs> tomorrow go. Great. If I can come out with some sort of battery powered car that will be that will that everyone can afford, then you know what? Taylor Gooch could come back and play in the in the memorial. It really does come down to like when you start <laughs> like, going great, down what that, are we talking about? When you start going down that path of, you know, I we anti Walmart or whatever, that's just the example we're using. Yeah. And you, you <laughs> it fills your brain. And then at a certain point people go, Well, I just I wake up in the morning and I take a piss and I like gotta make rent and I gotta you you can't spend all your time trying to tear down these establishments because you're like, I just, I, I just took a shit and I, and then I just got to go pay my electric bill like that. It becomes more small. These are big ideas. They're big ideas, but people can't spend their entire lives thinking about these big ideas because there's so much day to day shit that life is stressful. Life is hard. Trying to make ends meet is hard. So people just get, they're just like, right. I, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm going to go to Walmart and buy something for a dollar as opposed to $4 at the moment. And there's always two That's sides it. to every Walmart's story. Like there, there's always, this. yeah, but like I'll Walmart, right. I'll we, be a we Walmart all act, fucking all week. So they'll be like, all right. Like, like we could chirp them, but I mean, hundred percent. And like, there's always two sides to everything. Like we, in, in hindsight, it'd be great if everyone was a mom and pop shop, but like you also want to sit on your couch as in the year 2022 and just order fucking food or like Amazon. you want to order Amazon. you want to order a new order um, and fry oh your, your, your tv Saturday goes night. out your tv like comes out because the hdmi cord is broken i can just click two buttons and someone just comes to my house with a cord like i can't do that at johnny rocket's fucking hdmi shop because he's away from memorial day weekend like it's just the way the world works so like and they create jobs and then the other you know it's just like you're, there's always two sides is my point totally and you're fighting a tidal wave you're the convenience and you know cheap laziness cheaper products all of that is always going to win it's a very it's a tough battle and that's what it's a little depressing sometimes when you think too much about it because you do want there to be change and you want everybody to treat each other with you know equally and with kindness but what what happens is that tidal wave just takes over everyone and it becomes too much and you're just like ah, i just yeah. gotta live my own life I ain't going back to horse and buggy times i want the hdmi cord tomorrow sorry it's just the way i am maybe that's selfish but that's he just wants like, that couch i just uh, want the couch like uh, it's crazy I want, I want really good pairs of uh, sunglasses. See, there you go. Look without at that. paying, without paying for you know the price that some of the big guys try to charge you, which wow. is ridiculous. You could beat the Father's Day rush, Shady Rays. What we're talking about, you could beat the Father's Day rush with the help of the official sunglasses on Foreplay. I like that. We collaborated with our friends at Shady Rays to build the perfect pair for golfers. The limited edition Barstool Golf Shades are in full swing, featuring a unique matte navy finish high visibility polarized emerald lenses and premium barstool logos throughout get a pair for yourself and a pair for your pops be the best looking guys on any given golf course this special collaboration only available while stock lasts so don't miss out on our team's personal favorite shades you go to shadyrays.com slash barstool golf to shop our exclusive collaboration with shady rays the barstool golf limited edition venturas these are the perfect gift for father's day secure them while you can that is shadyrays.com slash barstool golf and just in general shady rays has an excellent product i have many 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 pairs probably eight i might have eight total a couple of the barstool ones are over in my bag i got these brown ones right here uh go to shadyrays.com slash barstool golf and um and check them out uh yeah i mean i think at this point, what I'm most curious about is obviously if Phil or uh, Ricky or whoever fills the last spot, and really what the PGA Tour ends up doing. I, you know, I, I guess I'd be curious what everybody thinks if you were Jay Monahan, what you what you need to do. <clears throat> They're basically now these these players who were not granted uh, waivers to go play in this, but are choosing to play in this, are subject to disciplinary. Uh, action based on their membership of the PGA Tour. That could be a fine. That could be a suspension. That could be banishment, whatever. I honestly think if you're Jay Monahan, I think the only move that you can really make is to permanently ban them from the PGA Tour. I I honestly don't know if anything else. What are you going to slap them with a $20,000 fine? DJ's making $125 million. To go, like, what? Like, what? Like, what are you going to do? Right. You... They kind of DJ and live golf kind of called Jay Monahan's bluff here. So now you're in a position where 
yeah, I th- that's probably the way to go because he's got to look at it from the PJ Tour is deep. It's young and it's deep. And every week, you know, it's a new guy. There's a bunch of names that everybody knows now in this post Tiger era. So if you want to put your fucking balls on the table, your dick and balls on the table, if you're Jay Monahan, dick just permanently ban them. Like, all right, so now you don't have DJ and Sergio and Taylor Gooch and all these guys who were in that field. But like, like I'm saying, their PJ Tour is young and it's deep. How old's DJ? 35, 36. So he's he's getting up there. Like, I if you want to permanently ban them, I don't think I think it would send a message, and I don't think it's taking that much away from the PJ Tour. DJ 37. He'll be 38 yeah. in like wow. two weeks. Wow. Yeah, I think if you're Monahan, you just got to say I lost DJ, and now I don't yeah. want to lose anyone else. So like, you now live in a world in which you've lost Dustin Johnson. He's no longer part of your tournaments. He's no longer part of your league. And if you want to lose zero other people, you have to just say it's over. Like if you go there, you're done. You walk yeah, outside you, that that rope, and you're not coming back. And you don't think they'll try to guarantee money? That won't be part of the game of golf. You don't think that that's going to influence it? I think, well, I think if he denies that, then he's going to look like the bad guy. So I think if anything, I think what Liv has done is they've made which they've done already. I mean, like Phil Mickelson has win. kind of claimed that like he's already helped the PGA Tour he in has. many ways. That he, he has right. So like. If the wor- like in the worst situation ever, like you know, the PJ Tour just becomes more, you know, giving to their players and their unions. They are like they're going to guarantee more money and they're going to have these higher pit plans and all this stuff. So yeah, I think it's definitely a positive at the end of the day for the PJ Tour if Monahan reacts to it. If he's like, all right, we obviously see this competitor doing this, we're going to do it as well. It's going to look like he bent the knee a little bit, but who gives a fuck? That's what your players want, and he already right. has right with the pit program and and with I mean the players championship purse now was what 20 million dollars camp smith made like four million dollars winning the tournament that's that's like up 10x from five, 10 years ago it's like it's 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 insane yeah i think they gotta they'll guarantee money to some certain players and then also i think there'll be like a list now that they'll be like use some obscure legal language that if you play on certain tours you're no longer welcome to play in pga tour events but i think like, because to Phil, like, everybody, like, if Phil plays Thursday and Friday in the event, doesn't make the cut, or a name brand like that gets all those eyes on it, everybody's now interested in the tournament, the tournament gets to say, like, these people didn't make the cut and, like, build up interest, and he makes nothing off that. Um, so I, there has to be, that avenue's got to be opened up, where the pit plan now just extends to top certain players that get, basically, you know, payment, and that allows, you know, here's a real ricochet shot, but, like, John Deere now gets to go out and say, Ooh. like, you know, $10 million for somebody to show up um, to try to build people to, like, come to their event and play. And so it's not $10 million, but there's to all the PGA Tour events where even on this very show, we don't even really talk about because there's nobody playing. Like, now each one of those can go out and get their guy, get a couple guys to build interest in that week's event. I wonder what if it'll we get to a point where it's guaranteed money because, like, the PGA Tour isn't, not like they're not offering nothing it's in terms of like they have all these stops they have all this infrastructure they have all these huge sponsors like i i am curious actually like who is in a who's in a more um like who's in the better bargaining position the pj tour or the players as it sits right now with live golf because i people think it's probably the players but the pj tour has all of these things that it provides the players and you know it's got jack and it's got arnie and it's got you know, Tiger's got a host, a bunch of them. Like those are things that you're not going to get anywhere else. And if you're trying to go somewhere else, it's, you know, it's this live golf league that it's going to ruin your reputation and people are going to talk shit about you and you're going to get banned. So they've got, I don't know if guaranteed money is, it's a slippery slope that I don't even know how that system would really work. And I don't know if they need it. Here's the tricky part for me is that the tour could just allow it, right? Like the tour could just be like, yeah, it's you can play wherever you want. Like you could play, you could be a member of the PGA Tour, play a full PGA Tour schedule, and go play in four of the live events or eight of the, play in whatever that you want. So the tour, really, the the the, it's almost assumed that they just can't do the tour, but that's because the tour is choosing to tell them that they cannot play the PGA Tour and go play this other league, right? And basically, every other league, live whoever else, your PGA Tour, are like, yeah, yeah, you can play the PGA Tour and play in our events. And the PGA Tour alone is like, no, no, you cannot play in other events and be a member of the PGA Tour. So that is where it gets weird because, yes, they're basically, the the PGA Tour, by doing that, 
is inherently saying, we have all the leverage, you have to play with us. And we're saying, no, you can't go anywhere else. Where DJ, you know, it becomes a numbers game, really. Like, if the PGA Tour can just lose DJ, to be honest with you. That's just, like, not that big of a deal. Yes, he's a huge name. But, like, if DJ just doesn't exist anymore, the bottom lines just don't really change, right? And, like, Taylor Gooch. They could just lose Taylor Gooch. It just doesn't matter. But it does start to get to a point. At what point does that flip where it's like, all right, they've lost enough guys that now it matters? Well, it's the percentages. Like, it's... If the European tour was better, had better quality players than the PGA tour, then marketing dollars fail. Then all, everything starts to sway. So I think like the PGA tour has to hold on to that where if you go play there, you can't play here. And cause the live tour just has more financial backing on a per round, like per round event. So if the guys go there, then it loses the luster of winning on the PGA tour. And I feel like that's what they have to protect. They have to protect that shield in any way that they can because I think you're right. Like, DJ isn't the problem, but if six of the top ten players go to the Live Tour, that's an issue. Do you guys think the average golf fan cares about the PGA Tour at all? Like, the week-to-week It's a great tournament? question. <laughs> like, if all these golfers just go to another league, do you think anyone actually cares about it? <clears throat> and if so, which tournaments are they going to be like, oh, we really miss? Is, is it the players? Like Memorial. We all I just, think yeah. our generation less so than the last one because there's so many ways to be entertained, right? Like, the, like our new generation, us and people upcoming, are like just as likely to be fans of like us and watch what we do or watch what Good Good does or whatever than like be locked into the PGA Tour. Whereas if you were a big golf fan 20 years ago, like the only thing you had was the PGA Tour. Yes, I agree with that. It's just the more, yeah, I guess the older that we get, our generation gets, and the more that all of these things are advancing, like Netflix and like you're saying, YouTube and how much golf content you can consume, <clears throat> you only see the pop for the majors. And it's always been like that. I get it. But it had to have been different back in the day. And now it's like, think about the difference between last week's tournament, even Jack's tournament, and a fucking major where like people actually want to talk about. It. I mean, you don't see shit on Twitter or Instagram or anything about any other tournament aside from the four majors that we fucking get up for. We go and live stream in Hoboken. We gamble on it. It's like that's the only thing we fucking care about when it comes down to like the nitty gritty of what we want to watch in golf. And I just don't know. Like, I, I bet you that they're struggling with that with the PGA Tour. It's like, how much money are we going to put into this product that like. Do people really care about the fucking John Deere Classic? Like, how, like how much are we supposed to fucking guarantee for these guys to show up to these things? I mean, it's not really popping off that much. It's, but like, I, it's just not catching on. I think, I, and I don't know, but I would imagine it's still an incredibly lucrative tour. For sure. Oh, yeah. Like, and I that's what it. matters. They don't, I mean, obviously it would be awesome to be like trending on Twitter all the time. But if they're clearing as much as they're clearing and, you know, they got a <laughs> bunch of young stars, they, it would be nice to be have like, the presence of the M- what the NBA has on social media. I mean, they that's just as good as it gets. But if you're still making a ton of money in these stops, locally these stops are very important. Like to the to everyone in that local community, yeah. and they you know the volunteers and the, all the people that go and they spend money. Hospitality's like that's, big. Like they make a lot like, of money on that's hospitality. The live golf, these, like other, these big other clients events. just being able to bring like their clients to a tournament and see DJ. That stuff's where a lot of the money is. I also think, ironically enough, I think. The like the four of us on this show care less about the PGA Tour than the average golf fan. Probably right. Can. Like I don't. I just don't think we care that yeah. much. Like I, you know, like and and yeah. But I think that's. Pretty, I think I don't know. All my buddy, like I'm not like talking from week to week with my buddies about like, oh, did you guys see fucking Billy Horschel? Let's ran up the leaderboard. This like no one's really doing. That. I I haven't talked to anyone about a regular PGA Tour event in like my whole entire life. It's just like we went to Zurich Classic and it kind of just existed. Like people were just walking around. It's almost like they got lost. Like how did I end up here? I don't, it's just. You're like looking around slowly. You're just like, what's happening here? It's not like you're fat fucking Southern Hills and Tiger Woods is on the fucking driving range. You're like, holy shit, this is golf. We got to be here next year. It's just different. And I don't know. I think any golf event brings local fucking business. You know what I mean? If Liv comes to fucking Florida. Or right. Min- it's just- well, that's, I'm really interested to know like the attendance at the, at the Liv tours, like people going, is it just the same? Because then PGA tours got even like a much larger issue. If they're getting like the type of I feel like there's going to be like 11 people at the Liv. That's tour. what I kind of think. Like they're playing in a park. That's like, Oh yeah, these guys are here today. And like, that's it. Um, because yeah. then, you know, now I'm even like, 
they only have what the PGA Tour has that we're saying is boring. They don't have their big major event. You know what I mean? Like they're well, just a I tour think, built on just nothing tournaments. And and what I and I forget kind of the live tour like makeup and strategy, but the, like in terms of the season long progression, but. I think that's where like the PGA tours really failed with like the FedEx points. Like nobody still even understands. They think everybody just thinks it's a weekend competition. There's really no year long event. And so there's nothing like, Oh, he's picking up points. It's like, dude, what are you even talking about? And then all of a sudden at the end, they're like, Oh no, we've had a season long competition that nobody's cared about. No one cares. And so I think, I remember reading, and you know, obviously us like golf fans here. I remember reading the Live Tour concept, but I forget the actual like um, the backing behind it. But I do think there is some sort of like longer year long progression. There's no cuts and things like that. So I, I think that's like one item that the PGA Tour has missed since its inception is this idea that anybody cares about the year long event. Give me the PGA Tour with the Formula One model. I want team aspects. I want team tailor-made. I want That's people walking around golf tournaments wearing tailor-made. You're and describing a live golf yeah, tour. Yeah, you're describing live tour. That's it. Well, are they – but they're so they're going to have – they're going to have like team names and stuff though. Like I yeah. mean – I think that's what they're doing. Yeah, no guts. That's confirmed because like, that's like unbelievable. That's like been their whole model. <laughs> it's like well, I knew that they were going to have some sort of – Like a no, team captain, they they're going to like events, do a like, whole thing. I Frank is going to go nuts and bring them in like the tailor-made truck, like fixing up new clubs for this week, like new wedges, just like they're changing Dude. tires in F1. 100%. <laughs> I always knew that they were doing to- team events. I didn't know that it would be like – team whatever versus like and then there's a leaderboard of each team at the end of the year like there could be a team winner and an individual winner just like formula one i mean that fixes golf right there so i mean he's now a live guy well no i mean i (laughs) i like the idea all right yeah it's just they kind of line up right there when it comes to like what i think got where i think golf should go team and individual competition going head to head all season long 12 teams 48 players 54 holes eight events no cuts, shotgun starts. This is like what this, yeah, it's pretty much exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Fucking, you know, I just, I just think the PJ <laughs> tour has enough firepower and each guy, like we all know as a fan, I just want to, we all know as fans of all these other sports, what players play for what teams. And I think that the PJ tour has enough like, we know which guys are Callaway guys. We know which guys are Taylor May guys. We know which guys are Titleist guys. How much fun would it be if the tour just did what fucking Liv is doing, where we could actually rally around these guys and not give a fuck about the FedEx Cup points? I do not care that Dustin Johnson started that fucking FedEx at, at 10 under, and the next guy started at 8 under, and the next oh, guy started at 6 so under. Bad. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? I want to know that this team is winning, and we're going to go celebrate and pop champagne at the fucking leaderboard. We're just, top. we're ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to turn golf into a team sport. That's yeah. what we want to happen. Because team sports are just easier to root for and root against. Week in and week out. Yes, they are. It's yeah. just a fact. Week in and week out, if I can just casually check on how my team is doing. Be That's epic. so much better. So much better, be, dude. Imagine us too, like all of, like the influencers of like these brands, like Team Taylor made. We'd be going fucking right. crazy For wearing team all the Srixen. gear. All the, like, then you have, like, Team Wilson that's, like, trying to make it but not really making it. You got, like, 100%. Team and you're Titleist paying attention. out there. You're paying attention to the guys who are finishing maybe 50th because you need that extra point. Like, just like Formula One, you're like, this guy needs to make the cut this week. And Team Taylor made takes a one point lead going into the fucking tour championship. This is unbelievable. We have to do it. How, you know what we should do? We should start our own league. Yeah. We don't have many attractions. No, we're, like we're less, we're certainly less problematic than, fucking, than live. Yeah, yeah. We'll just start I doing like it. Fucking twist the whistle a lot, but that's about yeah. it. You know, no, we're all I'm right. a self lover. I love the idea. I think that to, well, no, no. I well, think yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Actually, the, <laughs> the irony again of the whole thing is that Phil has actually been really successful and he got the pip. He got all that. And I think that the tour to everybody's point so far, is probably going to have to adopt something more in line, at least to some degree or some events, of what they're doing with the Live Tour. Whether that's a fall series, I heard rumors that you know Phil was trying to get the leverage to then do a fall series that is all team based, so you have your regular thing from January through you know now or through you know the the last major in July, and then there's a break, and then there's a fall series that's all team based. 
um, which would be in line more with football, which is, you know, and you could do them during the week when football is not on. Like there's, you know, there's clearly a demand, I think, for team golf. Look how big the Ryder Cup is. Look how big the President's Cup even is. Like team golf, team aspect to the entire thing. There's such a desire for it. And the the week-to-week tour is – they just have such a – they have a comfortable model. The PGA Tour has a comfortable model. And trying to uproot that is difficult. That's pretty much what Phil is doing. And look how that turned out for him. He's like banned from earth at this point. <laughs> There's just nothing exciting that happens when a random golfer wins a golf tournament. I did not I do not care. There I have no backing behind Billy Horschel or anyone that he beat yesterday. I don't I did not care. It's so you have to get me to care. So whatever that means, whether guys go play fucking live and then that's going to make you care make us care from week to week. That's what you got to do, Monahan. That go sit in a fucking room and make us care tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right, cuz like even if Frankie you had the idea of like Okay, I'm going to check in on the season standings. I didn't check in on golf, but I would love to know, like, points-wise, now where Horschel jumps to because of the win. But that's not even on a golfer, golf fan's radar of caring about the season long. So, like, yeah, they need to. I mean, in the team events, you know, we've always thought, oh, we need more of those things, alternate shot, whatever the case may be. So, hopefully, you know, I want the PGA Tour to, like, stay, but I would love to see them adopt new games, kind of like new play throughout. Um, and if that's a new tour, I guess, great. I really just want like more interesting golf and some sort of season long idea. Uh, like the because- PGA tour did a complete rebrand next year. And they were like, everything's just wiped clean and we're doing this new thing. They still have all the big tournaments. Guys can still win individually, but they did this team aspect, the whole thing. You think people would be in like an uproar being like, no, we want the old tour back. Or do you think most people would be like, oh, I'm fucking in on this. I think it'd be really interesting. Like, I think Live Tour will, like, see. Because you could still say, like, Frankie and I are a team. Trent and Riggs are a team. You know, some days, some weekends, we play together, alternate shot, whatever case, best ball. And then other times, it's individual. And if you shoot three under and I shoot four over, like, we have a team score for that. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. still a team event. You could have won it. I think there's so much they could do. And, yeah, I don't – I think they're just – it's just what do you old... think the what do you think the perception of like the world would be if they just completely quote unquote bent the knee to like competition yeah. copied them and just <laughs> said like we're just gonna do what you're doing? I mean that would be the ultimate fuck you to to all of live and been like oh like what you're doing is like working we're just gonna do it and, right. like, you're just no longer a thing <laughs> right I think who we'll cares awesome. who, like, oh that so is, like, Jay Monahan loses funny. Jay Monahan loses like a debate amongst two CEOs that like one guy had a better idea than the other just take it just. Just literally take his ideas and do it. What, what's stopping him from doing that's that? That's the announcement. He waits a couple days and he's like, you know what? We've got this brand new concept. And they just take a screenshot of a live tour concept and just throw it on the homepage. Or just completely ignore Like unmotivated. This wasn't motivated by anything. <laughs> we just wanted to restructure. So we're going to do it this way. What do I think the perception would be? I think, well, it, the question is how much changes from week to week. Because you can't change it all. I think you got to keep parts of it. But yeah. if they were like, we're going to try this new thing, um, I think people would be very open to that. Maybe that's just me. Maybe like the people who aren't on Twitter or, or aren't on social media would be like, what the fuck is even happening? But I think generally, I think people would be into it. Let's, uh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about how the teams would work. I mean, how the teams would be formed. Let's talk about Tommy John first. Then we're going to talk about that. But because it, it's, you know, like, what do you just create? 20 teams of like four or something or, or, or six and like, and then sponsors bid to own teams. And then those teams can do like, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that. But Tommy John, when, when the I summer heat, this. when <laughs> the summer heat is melting your popsicle, you need underwear that'll keep your tall boy on ice. Ooh, Whoa. that's Tommy John. Tommy oh, John's breathable moisture wicking oh, fabric. Sometimes I'm like one of those little mini Dr. Pepper cans. You know the one where like they show like, like a basketball player holding it and they're like, can you believe that's a real water bottle? <laughs> and everyone's like, no, it's just one of those little mini Poland Springs. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say I'm like those um, the <laughs> bottle, the airplane liquor bottles. That's what I'm like. Uh, yeah, the, the nips. The yeah, nips. the nips. The nips. Yeah. I'm, I'm the nips most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Tommy John's Apollo underwear has ultra breathable technology, keeps your skin up to seven degrees Fahrenheit cooler than regular cotton. I believe that. With How dozens, did they do that, Matt. They they went in and just thermometered their dicks. Yeah, I guess so. Probably a lot mm-hmm. of testing. Yeah, it's awesome. Little, 
They're a little I nip, part of that. Little nipper dicks there in there just testing them. Just running around. All right, let's. How hot is it? How's, oh, it's seven degrees. Cooler. How cold? Your I mean, dick? Riggs and I oh. we're wearing Tommy Johns, and Riggs and I are in Vegas, and it's hot but, but in Vegas. Tommy so Johns are keeping you seven degrees cooler. That's right. The rest of my body is hot, not my undercarriage. One hundred and one degrees today. It's going to be uh, with dozens of comfort innovations. Tommy John will keep you looking and feeling cool all season long, from lounging at home to summertime fun. Uh, played yesterday nine holes out here is like one hundred five degrees. My undercarriage area was very comfortable. Thank, probably seven degrees more comfortable. Thank you to Tommy John. Shop TommyJohn.com slash four right now. 20% off your first order. Get 20% off right now at TommyJohn.com slash four. That's TommyJohn.com slash four. See site for details. Tommy John is truly, honestly, genuinely. With the ad reads over. This Tommy John's the only underwear that I wear. It's not even close. It's the only underwear that I wear. Not even close. Also, we were supposed to read that second. I read it third. So love you, Tommy John. Sorry about that. But you're also welcome because this isn't even an ad. Ad's over. And we're still telling everybody that we love Tommy John. It's the greatest um, company on the planet. They're really good. So if you're the PGA Tour and you're just going to now implement a team system, do you say, I think you say something like, all right, we now have 20 teams. The teams have, you know, six six players each. Seven, let's call it. You get like an alternate each week. And like, Sponsors bid to own the teams, and then those teams go out and pay players like a certain guarantee. And there's like maybe a rev share with the PGA Tour in terms of prize money versus like the percentage you're allowed to guarantee, right? Just like no different than like you have a salary cap in any other sport. You have like you can only guarantee a certain number. And then like why have a salary just- cap? Just literally say like announce your like announce who's going to be the 20 sponsors or the 20 team kind of like heads one could be amazon one could be microsoft who the hell knows and be like first on the clock is rory mcelroy place your bids and then just if everybody could watch that tracker go up just like they play like you know lewis hamilton or any of the f1 racers and don't even talk about live we've adopted the f1 model to frankie's point and <laughs> like this is what it is and like if you want the best driver you got to pay 62 now, million do you like a that year. do you like that or do you like <laughs> having a, a live streamed it's a huge event do you like having a draft where every single pga tour player is in the fucking crowd you have 20 teams 20 sponsors some teams got like captains like fucking jack nicholas walks out and sits down in a captain's chair fucking tiger woods walks out and like they draft players and now once you just like in the nba and the nfl once you draft them then you can negotiate a contract and the, i mean the player could then deny being on that team it's a whole fucking big story he didn't want to play for fucking jack and amazon but he's gonna go now here comes nike swooping in and getting tight dude Either way, I agree. I just think I think the fucking auction would be absolute chaos. They're basically like horses up there, and you're just like fucking. Every, I mean, it could be a billion dollars at some point. I mean, that'd right? Be but then you got like Team Haas out there. It's like, dude, I can only spend five hundred k on my golfers, like top end. And then you got like Amazon. That's like, dude, I'm just gonna give a hundred million dollars to six guys who are gonna run through the field. And that team's just gonna dominate, which is how sports work. You right, have more which, money, you win just, the game. Right, that's pretty exactly. much. Which would Correct. be electric. Team sport. Dude, this is just it. Like, just fucking wipe the slate clean and let's do this tomorrow. <laughs> How works. exciting that would be. I'm seeing like a dark stage with lights everywhere. Right. We're going Because you could still do all the individual competitions. Like this week, at last week at the Memorial. Individual competition. Your team picks up points depending on like who makes a cut, who like, you know, qual- who wins, whatever. And then you'd have these epic team competitions as well, where you could do like yeah. four man best ball and people would be shooting a thousand under par and it would be <laughs> awesome to watch but, some weeks. But not even that, just think about how cool it would have been to be like, all right, like Billy Horschel was the sixth man on team like Sketchers or whatever, some boring ass team. And then all the other five guys wait around at the Memorial Run. They're like going crazy right. when he won, like celebrating on the College green. Golf. Just yes. being right, exactly. Being like, we just fucking picked up 15 points today, Billy, because you just won the fucking memorial. Go fucking shake Jack's hand and let's go. We're in the we're in the top six. We're gonna make the playoffs now. Like we are going to make the playoffs because Billy Horschel just fucking crushed everyone else. And even like, all right, Max Homa put 99 times this year, this this week. It was a fucking PJ Tour record, insane. 99 putts over four rounds. Crazy. Like that got us into the fucking playoffs. Also, you like, there's so much going on. Like, let's just do it. Let's what what's stopping us from doing it? 
while you're looking at it. PGA Tour is just banning everyone that does it. <laughs> but it doesn't have, I don't want the lift to do I want fucking PGA Tour with all the players and all the cool logos. And I want all, like, I want to see, like, what companies come in and sponsor it. Because there's no fucking atrocities happening behind the PGA Tour. All the, all, everyone will hop in on it. All the advertisers will love it. Imagine a team fucking Tommy John. What are we talking about? I love it. I fucking love it. I'm rock hard thinking about it. I I love it. I genuinely think this is what Phil Mickelson has been trying to accomplish. Like, I think well, he literally is like... He should have came uh, on the podcast like a year ago and we should have really started to fucking hammer this home instead of saying, oh, they kill gay people, whatever. We just need to play better golf. Like, I think he just took the wrong route. The only, I think Phil like, Mickelson made a huge mistake there. He should have been fucking hammering this home. The main... The, the thing is, it's all awesome. And like to have the amount of money to do it just took... It just took coming from Saudi Arabia. That was that's just the issue. They're like, yeah, yeah. Here's two billion dollars. Go do whatever you want. They're like, awesome. Here's what we're gonna do. And everyone's like, that's super cool. Except like we just can't take the money. <laughs> and then here we are. Now here we are. Years later, just been debating it nonstop. The problem is that the golf's been boring for too long of a time for these really big investors and owners to want. If golf had this system. It would just be one of the major sports in America. We would, it would be our Formula One. We'd fucking go crazy for it. And then guys like fucking Bill Gates would be buying teams or like whatever Bill Gates' ex wife is. She's like buying the Portland Trailblazers now. Like you'd be getting these investors to be giving a lot of money. You wouldn't have to go to Saudi Arabia to go fucking take their blood money. You would just, you have it here. It's, it feels like it's too late. It feels like you're not going to get it. It's always going to be gimmicky. I think they just have to do it so that. In 50 years, that's just the way the PGA Tour was. It's where it's going, man. We want to watch team sports and everything. We just talked to fucking Nade Shot. They fill out stadiums to watch team video game play. Stadiums. They go to at t fucking stadium in Dallas and they sell out 100,000 people watching them play video games because they want to see team aspect. They have five guys set, sitting in front of a computer playing Call of Duty and they go crazy when they fucking win the tournament. No one cares about individualistic stuff. They want team aspect. They want to wear the jerseys. They want to wear the logos. Fucking Tiger Woods couldn't even capitalize on a cool logo his whole entire life. Imagine he was a part of a team and he was like the number one guy. He was like the Derek Jeter of the Yankees of golf this whole time. We'd be going fucking crazy even more than we are right now. Come on, PGA Tours, figure it out. Our four-man scramble with, against Bob Does Sports just hit a million views. One people million. Like, people like watching a mille. Team golf. A million. One million. Um, I love it. I don't think it's ever, 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 ever going to happen. Nope. But I love it. I'd love to just scream like this at a fucking board meeting with PGA Tour and being like, what are you dummies doing? Well, it goes back to what I said before. They're still making money. They, yeah. like, uh, oh, they, a lot they, they, of money. Right. The only thing that would make them change is if their bottom line got drastically different. Oh, if uh, these like, oil Saudi regime people came in and just threw them a fucking couple billy. Imagine they, they start to back the PGA Tour. Just It's just a shame, man. Golf is such a cool sport. And I would love to be able to root for it week in and week out. I just don't give a fuck from time to time. I don't. I don't give a fuck. I did not watch a second of Sunday yesterday. I had so much things going on that I that would take me away from the team. I had the Rangers on. I had the fucking basketball on. There's so much shit. I was making steaks. I was grilling fucking steaks. Outside. I couldn't fucking watch that tournament because I didn't care. And Billy Horschel won by a lot. He's, He's actually dominated. a Dr. Brett McCabe guy. So shout out to Dr. Brett McCabe who now has back-to-back winners. On the PGA Tour, Ooh, Sam Burns, wow. Sam Burns, and fucking and Billy Horschel. That guy's doing something right. Doctor Brett McCabe is doing something right because he's fixing me. I have a process now, guaranteed. He's fixing me. I'm not seeing it on the score sheet, but I'm seeing it in the way I'm playing the golf, the, the courses. I'm like Tiger Woods. I have a swing change. I have a thought process change. I need a I need a year to flush it all into my system. Doctor Brett McCabe's doing something real special. Incredible that he's. I didn't know he had. Um... Sam Burns, I've forgotten that. Yeah. John Rahm. It's crazy. Frankie Burley. It's, um, yeah. yeah, even, I mean, even like last week when you had Sheffler and Burns, it's like, it's just, it, it's a cool playoff. I tuned in for, I think, only the playoff was like the only thing that I saw was the playoff because I heard it was going on. And yesterday, I checked the leaderboard a few times, saw that Billy Horschel still had a four or five shot lead every time I checked and didn't watch any of it. And... We're pretty into golf. So, I want, I mean, they're making money. That's the reason they're not going to change. I just don't understand where it's really coming from. I don't, you know, it's like who's watching and, like, glued in in, in June, on June 5th, 
2022, summertime, a couple weeks after Memorial Day, who is like locked in to Billy Horschel closing out the Memorial? And I love the Memorial. It's one of my favorite tournaments. I remember watching Tiger hole out chips and win there all the time and shake a Jack's hand. I like the Memorial, and I didn't even watch any of it. I think it's just that old demographic. I mean, like my yeah. buddy's dad, he plays golf. He's retired, plays golf at 7 a.m. pretty much like every day and certainly on the weekends. And then he's asleep by 7.30 p.m. No joke. So he goes and then he just sits and he watches the PGA Tour and that's what's on TV. And he's doing that every Saturday and Sunday without fail. And so I don't know if they have like, you know, talk about like Nielsen ratings and these statistics that are just way outdated. Um, I think that's who they, like they pray off of, and that's like every TV is on those things. So the, they probably have really good Nielsen ratings because the only people right. watching them have the Nielsen boxes. Still Bingo! And that around are legitimately, yeah. like the the only people that are like they they can't get ratings from me. I got some fucking HD shit hooked up to my TV. I don't have no Nielsen rating in my box. They got some some. Trent Ryan in Iowa sitting there on his big ass fucking couch, just being like, "Oh, I hope someone wins a golf tournament this week." And he right. he clicks his TV off, and, and then the, the Nelson they box charge. Like, wow, <laughs> they charge marketing off those Nielsen ratings. So it's like those aren't changing. Like it takes a while for that generation to like die. You know, that sounds a little messed up, but die off and no Nielsen boxes the whole bit. And uh, and that's like maybe when things will change. But until then, it's like, yep. He goes, plays golf, 7 a.m., he's back at noon, and that TV is just running until he goes to bed at 7.30. It's just not shareable, and that's the way the world is going. Like When you turn on ESPN, they should have a whole thing about the team leaderboards, what Taylor made did this week. Like They don't get to talk. Like You watch you watch SportsCenter, you sit down, you sit on the couch and watch Sports, SportsCenter. Billy Horschel was like five seconds worth of it. Like, oh, this week at the Memorial, he came in and he shot 13 under. And it's just like, oh, whatever. I don't even know who the fuck's that guy. You just turn on the channel. But if it was like this whole thing about leaderboards and this guy got into the top 50 to get his team, it just works, guys. It's just the way the world is going. Team aspect. Need it. It would be epic, too. It's huge live, guys, it seems like. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, but like if if there was a team tailor-made – and they released the stealth this year, and then everybody else is trying to catch up to that technology. You <laughs> yeah, got you got like other golfers like just walking around, and like the driver, just like the F one cars, just like sitting out there with dun, nothing dun, around, dun, 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 and they're dun, just like dun, 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 checking out the specs of it, and just like what they do with that thing as it's so different. It would be God, that's good. Just steal it. Just, just steal the idea. Yeah. It happens all the time. I want to Instagram steals tomorrow. from Snapchat with everything. Everybody's stealing from everybody. Once you get five years down the road, nobody's going to give a fuck because they're going to be having such a good time. Steve Jobs comes out with the iPhone and fucking Bill Gates comes out with like the Google fucking Pixel, whatever. You know, they always just, you right. just copy your competitors and you just do it. There's NFL stole from the XFL. Like, yeah. let's just get this <laughs> yeah, thing rolling. Exactly. Same shit. Also, I mean, NBA like, stole from the ABA. I mean, come on. DJ just announced this and like, we're like four Actually, or five years Actually, I don't know if that's true. Is that wrong? Nobody right? seems that it's like water under the bridge at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, DJ. DJ gets a that's pass. That's what I was saying before. It already, it's just, Water the it's just a thing that exists now and right. that's happening. Um, a thing that exists is sport clips, haircuts. I think Lurch, you, know, you got a nice little hair. I think Frankie, you got a nice little Yeah, I, went to, I, I got a sport clip haircut the Ooh. other day. It's nice and high Ooh, and tight. You look nice, Frankie. Yeah, you look you clean. Know? You almost look like a, like a peaky blinder. Mm. I look like what? A peaky you're, blinder. You're, peaky blinder. The, yeah, the, the sides tight. are down. Look, it's nice, you know. You look good. Really nice. You look really good. At Sport Clips Haircuts, expert stylists give you a champion cut that's guaranteed to impress. Uh, they are, the stylists at Sport Clips, are specifically trained in how to cut guys' hair. Next time you're in, ask for the MVP haircut experience. A champion haircut with neck and shoulder treatment, perfectly steamed hot towel, and seven-point massaging shampoo. Um Little disclaimer here, neck and shoulder treatment not available in Washington or Oregon. But next time you go in, make sure you ask for the MVP haircut experience. It's an awesome haircut. You get neck, shoulder treatment, uh, steamed hot towel, seven-point massaging shampoo, sport clips, the ultimate haircutting experience. Not only will you leave feeling great, but you'll look fantastic too, much like Frankie, our little peaky blinder we got on the show. Sport clips, the pros in men's hair. Go check out sport clips. They're experts in men's hair. Get the MVP uh, experience. I went to Sport Clips and I noticed I had a lot of gray hairs on my lap when they were cutting. It's just tons. Just I'm going to be fully Dude, fucking gray. I want to be fully it, fucking gray by the time. Maybe my wedding. I mean, at this point, it's just the way it is. 
in one of the graphics we put out for Breaking 90, I could all I could see was the grays on the side of my head. And also, I went to a, a buddy's wedding in Denver over the weekend, a high school buddy of mine. And everybody's going gray. Everybody's just, their hair is turning gray. That's the only thing that changed. Everybody's exactly the same except for their hair. Everybody's got gray hair. our now. bodies are dying. You know I mean? It's just like they're We're decaying. Just, like the color and the vibrance is just going away. And it's just turning gray As we get white. older... The pigment cells in our hair follicles gradually die. When there are fewer pigment cells in a hair follicle, that strand of hair will no longer contain as much melanin and will become a more transparent color like gray, silver, or white. That literally says our hair follicles gradually die. Think about that. Parts of our body are dying off because we're just getting older. Like they're just like we're getting to the point where things are are on the way down. Big like they're. They've lived their life. We have parts of our body that are now, they've lived its life, and it's dead. Crazy as this is, went to the ER last night. So talk about death and getting morbid. We were talking maybe six months ago about heart attacks and things like that. I woke up at 4.30, chest tight. Went, just was like, you know what? I'm just going to go get this thing checked out. No way. Healthy heart. We're okay. But, uh. What was it? Gas? Uh, it was like either like stress or like like acid reflux or something like that that I just got to get checked out probably too. So I got to meet with some. I haven't been to the doctor in probably 10 years, but I like my chest, I can still feel it's tight. So yeah, I woke up about 4 a.m. this morning, looked around. I'll tell you what didn't help. The old Google machine. You can't find a positive Ooh, article dude. in there Ooh, about right. chest tightness. So nope. you're talk- I was like... You know what? Let's just go see the. What do you think you're going to find? Oh, my chest is dude. Is dude, no. Tight. So it's gonna be like, oh, it just means you like to look at the butterflies in no, the morning. No, no, so no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. turn over so on your st- sleep on your stomach. You'll be fine. It means your heart's so failing. So I actively looked for like things, no. that, things that it couldn't be, like other things than a heart attack for chest tightness, and it was just like you couldn't find that. And so, dude. anyways, off I went. You're talking to a guy. I did. I had to take Google off my phone two months ago when I was missing trips because I was just like, yeah. you Google something and it tells you, well, you're 35 minutes from dying, and you're just like, all right, well then I'm now I'm just freaking out. How'd you take it's Google the, off your phone? How'd you manage to do that? Well, I just had to take. Um, I had to move my web browser app. <laughs> I had to move it because then every time I would try to click it, I would just hit nothing. Because yeah, back then I was just googling everything I possibly could. <laughs> bad. It's That's a bad so place good. to be. I, it's a, I'm just moving it. It's so good. <laughs> I do that with my Uber Eats app sometimes. Muscle memory. <laughs> just move it to well, a location I mean, you, know, you can't like, find. You shouldn't be doing that. You just drag down. I told you guys this. Yeah, we talked about this. That's yeah. the only way but, I look at my phone now, by the way. It's yeah. like. There's, I have not adopted it yet. Oh my god, it's the best. I haven't either. What's the drag down again? Talk so you just, just on your main screen. You just drag down, and it's a search bar, and you just hit like the first couple of letters of whatever app you want. So it's like I'll always go down, just like TW Bang Twitter. It's you're you're in, and just like put your thumb in the Twitter middle of the is, screen and pull down. My Twitter is the most accessible uh, app I have. Middle it's of just the bang screen, right at okay. the bottom there. Boom. Yeah, me too. I don't know that I'm going to adopt that. Oh, you'll use it for like if you need to. You know what's great for Trip Actions app or fucking like yeah, where you just uh, don't know where it is or yeah. Delta or uh, American exactly. Airlines. And then I you, got you come down, you just, you just hit like D, and it's just like Delta pops up, and right. I'm already in. I already got my flight for next week. It's it's in. Right. The obscure apps like that you don't go to every day. That's where I started to use it, and now it's yeah. just taken to every app. Well, I'm about to start my my. My, my porn gazing. It's just you, you hit R and Reddit pops up and you're like, all right. Oh, boy. Take a look around the room, you know? <laughs> um, oh. DJ, there's a first picture I've seen of Dustin Johnson's first practice swing Monday at the uh, Centurion Club uh, for the Live Golf event. I'll say it is weird to see it. Like, it's been... It's been tried to be painted by so many different people as a joke that it's weird to see it in real life. They have like the live golf signs and it's like green grass and he's on a driving range. And it's just like he's just at an event that an entire team and like company of people have been working to try to make really cool. You know what I mean? It's like it's just a real thing because everything with this live golf league, it's felt fake a little bit because they always tease us with everything. They didn't give us the field for a long time. 
Like they weren't announcing who was maybe going to come over. Like it never felt all that real, but it turns out it's super real. Like you're saying, there's, they had signage made, they had all this stuff ready to go and now they're just going to do it. I wonder when, like, what's the time, what's the timetable for the PJ tour to respond to this? I'm surprised they haven't responded already, to be quite honest. They got to just be grinding over what to do, right? Like I just, anything, anything other than a ban or like at least a year long suspension is nothing, right? Like that's just nothing. nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Imagine though that news drops that it's a permanent ban for Dustin Johnson on the PJ tour. That will be golf doesn't trend often. Golf will trend up there. Well, then you got that would be huge. Legal teams weighing in because then it's like, are they liable? Because it's post him making the decision. It's a lot of per my last email, urgent reply needed. Like you know what I mean? There is a lot yeah. of corporate jar- jargon going on in those things. But it's you're right. To, that yeah, would make just... that would make world news. That would be oh yeah. You know, PGA Tour permanently bans Dustin Johnson. Crazy. He's the third winningest money list. Money list. He's third all time on the PGA Tour. Fuck. Yeah. He just and doesn't care. The legacy, like. Well, he made the decision. The we're, we're changing the PGA Tour tomorrow anyway. So what's the matter about legacy? True. We're, we're fucking. They, it's gonna change at some point. We're yeah, gonna Rich. run the. We're running that fucking board. I'm. I'm having a meeting with someone. They. Ha- I won't stand for this. <laughs> There's. <laughs> uh. Yeah, Rich Lerner tweeted, as I think Frank alluded to earlier, uh, Ricky and Phil to live eminent. How will the PGA Tour respond? The USGA chatter consuming the sport. I was wondering, too, with, with Dustin Johnson, I mean, as a Masters champion, will the Masters take a stand? Because pretty much everybody that's a member at Augusta is like the CEO of a company, and a lot of them companies with boards and publicly traded that like they have to answer to those people. So then they're like, you're just welcoming this guy who is – you know, clearly is uh, uh, allowing the sport wash. RBC dropped him. You guys are just welcoming him to the Champions Dinner. So will the, will Augusta not invite him because it's invite only? Like, will Augusta not invite him to the Masters? Or, like we were saying, it already kind of feels like DJ News is blown over. Like, will nobody care? Will, like, will DJ just get hit with a big fine from the PGA Tour and everything just is normal? If that's the case, then more guys are just going to go play in the live golf. Right, I think you have to you got to lay the hammer down. I think it's got to be probably a permanent ban. Holy and in terms God. of like Augusta, like they don't respond if they don't want to respond, you know? Like who I don't I don't see anybody at that place putting themselves in a position where if they do allow Dustin Johnson to come, they're not going to I mean, they just won't respond to it, I guess. I don't know. That would be it'll be very interesting to see what the majors do, the Masters in particular because I feel like they'll probably just let them play. How do you that, even that's watch, my gut. How do you even watch a live golf event? Does I don't it know. even air on TV? I don't know. Somebody just out there with an iPhone live streaming? Probably streaming. Could be yeah. us. That's truly insane that they really don't have any way of people watching it. Like what are they trying where are they what are they trying to gain? Be shown on Facebook, money? YouTube, and its own website. No one's watching that. Which is that. like no one's watching that's, that. Well, that's kind of the future, though. It like, is. I know. I'm we saying, move, no we, one now that's is who watching, we are. No one's watching that this week. I, this going. week might be their highest rating. You think they'll go to Facebook and watch golf? You YouTube is a good one. Yeah. I think people throw on YouTube. Most people have the app either on their phone or on their TV or wherever, right? Yeah. I mean, we better hope all, all the other stuff aside, we better hope that people are streaming more. Big time. It's always, it, see, it's easy for me, but it's always just like um, – it's just like a nuisance. Like the other day, the Yankees were on Peacock, and I have Peacock, and on my TV, there's just one button to click. Same thing as hitting Yes Channel on fucking Verizon. But for some reason, something about it just irked me. I don't know why. You know what really irked me is that when I wanted to flip back and forth to channels, yeah. like usually when the Yankees go into fucking commercial, I could just go and turn on another channel. I can go watch Family Guy or like whatever. And I couldn't do that when they're on Peacock. You had to exit the browser, it spun for a second. And I was just like, this fucking sucks. Are you, I mean, it's it's funny, and I think I've said this before, and I people have tweeted it and stuff like. Now everybody like, now that we've got all these different streaming services, everybody's like, what? But what if we just combined all of them and put them all back in one place? And it's like now we're just going back to cable. Like that's how the world works. It it fractures, and then people 
don't like switching between apps because you can't just hit the last button. And it's like, what if we just took all these things and put them all in one package? And it's like, well, we're back, baby. Nothing. The more things change, the more they stay the same. That's just direct TV. That's that. That's the remote right. with like the page, the page option. And you could page from fucking a different. Li- that's just it. That's you're at, you're in the two hundreds. That's like your sports channels. You know, that's just. Back and forth, back and forth. I would say forth. streaming was great when there was only a few. That was when it was like at its peak, I feel like, because you were sort of one or the other. Now, like you're saying, I mean, I, what do I have? 11 streaming apps on my phone? Right. Yeah. Something Tough. like that. I think the bubble is bursting. I'm, I'm going to say they need to aggregate them. And again, I know what that <laughs> sounds like, but I think they need to. It's ridiculous. It's chaos. It's full gonna, chaos. They'll get back together. The prices will bloat. And 20 years from now, people will be like, let's fucking separate these things. <laughs> let's, let's cut that cord. You know? let's, let's get do these. it. <laughs> this um, is what it is. Uh, all right. It'll be interesting, obviously, to see how things fall. Kevin Na, uh, we got to mention this. Kevin Na uh, released a long statement over the weekend um, announcing his resignation and hence his retirement from the PGA Tour. Kevin Na is taking, obviously, the live money. He's taking the live deal. He's going to go over there and play. Uh, I saw uh, Danny Rappaport or Dylan DeChair, one of those guys, uh, was tweeting about his pension because, as people uh, have noted many times, the PGA Tour's pension policy is phenomenal. These guys make, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year till basically the day they die um, for being successful on the PGA Tour. So Kevin Na, by retiring, basically throws the first punch and is entitled to his pension. Um, so he'll he'll essentially be getting the best of both worlds by saying, yeah, I'm just not going to play the PGA Tour anymore. I'm going to live. I'm going to take the money. I'm going to keep the pension. The only <laughs> real issue with the whole thing that I have in terms of the Kevin Nas statement was like, I just wish guys would say like, hey, money talks. I'm just taking the money. That's exactly what I was going to say. I All this fucking language of like you know i'm doing this i'm doing this whatever blah 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 i just want dj to come out and be like if they offer me 125 125 million dollars i'm taking it and i'm leaving that's just what i'm doing like everyone being like oh I'm, this is what's best for my career and i'm you know blah blah i want to be able to play wherever i want and it's like no you want to make as much money as humanly possible that's where it gets frustrating sometimes i just want people to be like i I'm, I made this. I'm going to make as much money as humanly possible, so I'm going to do that. I'd respect that more than trying to cover it up by being like all these stupid little excuses. Just say you wanted 125 million dollars. I think more people understand that than anything else. Problem is, I think that's part of the deal. Oh, true. I think that's part of the deal because I saw somebody leaked like the player, the talking points that live like sent out to the players that are playing in it, and it's like grow the game, change the game, like all this stuff. I don't think, like, I think Liv is like, hey, we're paying you all this money, which, again, kind of brings up a negative, not again, but just in general, brings up a negative that we haven't really talked about much, which is that, like, now you're kind of reporting to Liv and to Greg Norman, who, even though he denies it, is, like, reporting to the Saudis. And so you're kind of just doing what they ask you to do, right? Like, when somebody pays you $125 million to dance, like, you got to dance. You have to. Yeah. You dance. Basically, you just dance. You start you moving your dance. feet. You just start moving those feet. <laughs> you just tap or like, tap, uh, tap a root. What movie is there and he shoots the feet and they're just moving around? Oh, um. Inglorious Bastards? Might be. Fuck. What the fuck movie is that? Is it I'd Inglorious love to see Bastards? the financials on, on Greg Norman's association with Liv. Yeah. It's got to be his incredibly comp plan. lucrative. Because mm-hmm. his, like him more than anybody else, even DJ is just taking the brunt of it because he stays in the news because he's got to put out these quotes and these, you know, answer these questions and say stupid things when asked about like, oh, they made a mistake. Like he's the one who has to take all this. So I don't know. It's got to be a lot of money. I'm sure he just gets a massive bonus once that field is full. Once he gets 40 players that are quote unquote like PGA tour level. Sure. There's a nice kicker for the guy. I'm sure he gets DJ like added, a nice one. I'm sure he gets yeah added uh, incentives for like a top ten player, a top oh, yeah. twenty player, right? Has to yeah. Bill, Bill Mickelson. I wonder how much of DJ's hundred and twenty five million came directly from Greg Norman's 
guarantee. You know what I mean? He probably like kicks him some money, being like, <clears throat> "If I got it, if I get a top twenty guy in here, I'll give you twenty five of my million." Like on top million. of it. Yeah, people. There's just millions there's, over there. Saudi groups. Got a ton so of millions. many, so many side deals yeah. happening. I don't think. I don't think anything has to come out of Norman's pocket. I think if he gets that, I think it's just everybody's getting paid. I think. I think Saudi's happy that they're like, we'll give you a little sum. You can have some. You can have more some. Yeah. It's, right. There is no payroll. There is no, no. salary. The Saudi there's regime, no allotment of budgets. I think it's the just, Saudi regime watches the live golf event. That's a great question. I think they're sitting around just fucking watch, like the no. whoever the leaders are. No. I think it's just they're like, no, nice we got what we want. Happen, yeah. I think they even have any idea it's happening. <laughs> it's this is just like an arm of them who are just like figure out how to make us not look like gigantic gaping assholes all the time. And like, all right, we're gonna try. How do we just stop them. those guys from doing that? That's that's like the like, we're all talking about guys having to not play in tournaments and stuff. Why don't we go fix the guys who are like killing journalists and fucking like slaughtering gay people. Like, why aren't we like moving all the focus onto like that? that well, I mean, there's above my pay grade, you know, there's been wars over that stuff throughout the middle East for, uh, you know, tens of thousands of years that have been pretty unsuccessful. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a question. I mean, I, I don't have the answer to it. I'm just like, it's crazy that we like, kind of we dance in the middle East kind of with some of one of those goals. It wasn't, I've wasn't always, received yeah. particularly well. I would say I've always thought uh, a good podcast idea would be, answering a question like the one Frankie just posed like questions that you feel embarrassed in a social setting to ask because it's so big and it's so intricate. But if you could just have experts who could explain it, like have Frankie Borelli sit down and say, why can't we take down the Saudi regime? Why can't we stop them? Like that's something if you said like to a bunch of people, people be like, I don't know. It's like a lot. Everyone wants to puke on themselves, but like, it's the fucking massive question in the room. That's just like, oh, like we're talking about how to not like tiptoe around a golf tournament. It's like, well, the real reason is because we don't like those guys that are funding it. So it's like, what's what's that about? Just like take Give a an super answer. complex issue and at least try to dumb it down a little bit for guys. Oh, like, I'm going to get so many DMs from guys that are like geopolitics. And no, I know. But like that doesn't fun. that doesn't. Like, yeah, that's not that doesn't off. do it. You need somebody to be like. Here's like the main pillars. And I know it's super complex, but it'd be interesting. Really interesting. Woo. Woo-hoo. Yeah. Well, yeah I mean, it's, it's, it gets, yeah, it's hot. No, but it's see, hot. Like, for that reason, for that That's reason. That's what I mean. That's exactly For that why. reason, that bro, re- the only thing we're going to be comfortable about arguing about is like if fucking Kevin Na plays in a golf tournament, but like we're going to take sides with that. It's like, why don't we actually talk about the real thing? What are yeah, we talking right. about here? You pull the little strand of the ball of yarn, and man, there's a lot of yarn to pull. And that's what I yeah, mean. And I know there is. Like, we're not we're not so stupid that we don't realize that it's like crazy complex. But it's like there is like that. Whoa, what are we talking about here? That part of it scares people away from talking about a lot of stuff. And then in the end, gets them to do whatever they want, <laughs> which is crazy. Everyone's I'm gonna eat afraid. a fucking burrito here in a little bit. That's what's going on in my life. You know, it's it's very small. That's America right there. Those baby. are probably out for I know. Me for yeah. Let's get the um, need a burrito. Fuck. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, let's get like the Secretary of Defense on here. Is that what we're trying to do? That'd be Jake. unbelievable, Rick. <laughs> Jake, can you book the Secretary of Defense? Let's just get <laughs> Let's just get some information. Going. You know what? Like all jokes aside, though, wouldn't it be so cool to ask someone like that about what they think about the live at this golf point, league? Like, like at this, sport at this point, washing we're sort of, and them we're like sort trying of, to westernize like their like whatever what they're doing. I'd love to hear someone that actually like is in that world talk about what they think they're doing and if it's successful, if we should be doing it. Like someone that actually matters in that world. I will say now that we're like coming up with this idea, this is basically the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah. He just true. brings on super important, high influential, smart people. And is like, what's happening. I'd love for him to bring this whole situation up. We need Jamie. Jamie is a huge golfer. He like responds to all of our, his, his head producer responds to all of our Instagram stories about golf. The guy's a golf nut. He should put this on his topic sheet one day. <laughs> I don't know that he has a topic sheet, Jordan. I don't think he, he just does. talks about whatever the fuck he wants to talk about. But I'd love for him to get into a deep dive about like the Saudi regime and how they're trying to take away PGA Tour players and bring them over and sport wash America into watching their golf events. Come on, that's a great Joe Rogan fucking conversation. 
You know, more we about have, that. We could just have the right people on here. I don't know who we would have on. Who do we? Do we get somebody from the State Department and just be that's like willing to share? I know that's tough. It's like talk to me about what do you think about this? Right. Like what the fuck's going on? What do we need to know? Why are we? Why is? Why are they horrible people for taking the money? You know, we need to kind of figure that out. Um, I'd love so to have that person and for, Greg Norman on the same show. Like someone that actually is in like military defense and like knows everything about Saudi Arabia, what they're trying to do, and then have Greg Norman on and have them have a conversation about who's corrupt and whatever. That'd be unbelievable. His brain would explode. <laughs> so we're talking about a lot, obviously, about people cho- choosing where to play golf, how to play golf, why. Um, if you want an easier way to play golf, you book your next tee time with the Barstool Golf Time app. That's the... Uh, that's the next thing that you need. We talked about apps earlier too and the drop down and how to find it. Just Barstool Golf Time. Book your next tee time at one of thousands of courses available by downloading our new Barstool Golf Time app available in the App Store. Our rewards program is available. You book rounds and submit course reviews to build rewards and get exclusive Barstool merch discounts. Book your next tee time with the Barstool Golf Time app available now in the App Store. You can leave reviews, videos, photos, tell people what the greens were like, what the staff was like, what the course was like. Is it firm, fast? Is it wet? Is it worth the money? Is it not? Give it a, a rating out of five stars. <clears throat> Reviews are great. You can help everybody else play. And then you also get discounts for rewards by using the Barstool Golf Time app by Supreme Golf. So use the Barstool Golf Time app. Thank you very much. Um, Billy Horschel won. Like we said, we didn't really pay uh, a ton of attention. You know, Billy Horschel is somebody that we've, I would say been hard on at times just because he comes, he could come off as unlikable. I don't really know any other way to describe that when he's playing, or when he kind of loses his mind a little bit. That's why he's got uh, Dr. Brett McCabe helping him out clearly. Um, I don't really have anything against people that have a little bit of temper tantrum a- issues. I've had some temper tantrums in my life, but for whatever reason, Billy Horschel, we've been hard on Billy Horschel. Um, he's just got that American psycho look to him where it's just like, it's the laugh and the eyes and he's just like, I'm going to kill you. It's just fucking holy shit. <laughs> but I've heard from many people, from many people that he could not be a nicer guy. He is just most down to earth family guy, lovable obviously really hard on himself but that's okay and i've played both sides of this i said i don't like when guys get like that because they just look like country club douchebags sometimes but then i watch baseball and a fucking guy pops out to the catcher with bases loaded and he just takes his fucking bat and slams it over his knee and tosses it and takes his helmet and i used to love paul o'neill used to go into the dugout and take a gatorade fucking cooler and smash it until it wasn't even anything anymore and we used to go crazy for it. We used to buy 21 jerseys just because paul o'neill was doing that and now all of a sudden with golf you're just not allowed to show your anger or your emotions so i always play both sides with it i I'm now leaning on the side now that I know more about Billy Horschel. It's just like, hey, that's just that's just what makes him go. That's what makes him tick. That's how he becomes a professional golfer that wins golf tournaments and millions of dollars. Is that he's hard on himself. He like self deprecating where he's like, Billy, Bill, oh Billy, isn't that what he always says? Oh yeah. Billy, it's like that's just what he does. Just like how I might be like, are you fucking kidding me? Every time I hit a bad wedge shot, so. Good for Billy. I'm I'm happy for him. I hope one day we can play a match against him because I'd love to see him like in a non PGA tour setting, just like kind of at his like home club. And I, you know, we've been around Billy a little bit more. I was with him inside the ropes with kids, Billy playing their first round on Thursday. I think it was at the waste management in, uh, in Phoenix earlier this year. He was super nice. He was commenting on a lot of the fans, things people were yelling, chit chatting with kids. So then, uh, I was chatting with him and his caddy in between shots and we're having a good time. And then I DM him a little bit about coming on and he was very much down to come on. Couldn't get the scheduling right. So I'm sure we'll have him on. I'm sure we'll um, cower and go up against a lot of the negative things that we've said before. But I think that's also natural in that, you know, when you watch something, you make judgments about people that are in the public eye and on TV. And you kind of, you, you, us being trying to, trying to be authentic and real and react the way that we react. Uh, and then when you actually get to know someone, probably more likely when you really get to know someone that like, they're not some horrific person that you're going to hate. You're probably going to like most people once you get to know them. So I imagine it'll be a similar situation. But I think very soon we'll have Billy Horschel on. And you're right, Frankie. I think he'd be an excellent, excellent four-man scramble guy to play against. He would be. He'd sneaky kick our ass, I think. Billy Horschel's dialed in. He's a good fucking golfer. I mean, they he all are. He is dialed in. But he is dialed in. He's been in the top. You know, every time you look at the leaderboard, it seems like Billy Horschel's just been around. He's just playing really good golf in the year 2022. I'd love to get him on right now. Like, like while he's on this hot streak, I'd love to play with him right he's now. He's the 11th ranked player in the world. That's fucking crazy. Billy Horschel is on a tear right now. He is he is uh, four spots ahead of Dustin Johnson 
He's three spots ahead of Wills Alatoris. He's a spot ahead of Xander Shoffley. He is uh, seven spots ahead of Tony Finau in the world rankings. Uh, nine spots ahead of Brooks Kepka. Like, this guy is... Billy Horschel is just playing really, 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 really good golf. And the Memorial is, is as much as we have shit on the PGA Tour of this show. Sorry about that, PGA Tour. What a roller coaster of a, of a year we've had with the PGA Tour. Like, Players' Championship, we were like, PGA Tour is the GOAT. Jay Monahan <laughs> dominate victory lap. And now we're like, this product sucks. Blow the whole thing up. But the Memorial is, of all their tournaments, one of the cooler ones throughout the year, one of the more prestigious. You get the Jack Nicklaus thing, Muirfield history, and Billy Horschel went out and won it. I mean, that's a big... That's a big feather in his cap at the end of his career. Big time. Absolutely big time. Remember when the beginning Jack's of the hand. year? The beginning what? of the year we like talked about the top ten and we I think like Riggs asked who do we think's gonna be like in it and who's not gonna be. And we thought at the time it would be pretty similar. Like John Rahm at the time was like number one and we thought that he'd stay. I don't think any of us saw Billy Horschel ever getting into that list. No. Um, I'd love to maybe halfway through the year, which is right now. I'd love to see like where it's at. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's right. It's about halfway through the year right now. Yeah. Six days late. No. Is it the end of the month would we have to to the year? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So yeah, I'd love to see where we're at with our predictions. Go back and see maybe Jake or someone or Ryan, our new intern. Ryan Coop. Is that his name? Ryan Coop. He's on here on the Maybe he can go back and see exactly who we picked and what we said and then uh, how we're doing halfway through the year. I'd love to see that. Uh, somebody just tweeted a good question to me. What is the latest on future Ryder Cup teams? Will any of this Saudi stuff factor in DJ not being able to play for the USA in the Ryder Cup? Probably. I guess that's a PJ of America question. God, all these organizations are just sitting there like, Fuck! Like the PJ Tour has to answer these questions. PJ Tour has to answer them pretty quickly because they just have events every week. But like US USGA is gonna have to answer next week. Then like RNA. But then like you know for Presidents Cup, uh, PJ Tour is gonna have to answer for that, I guess. But luckily, like Augusta is able to sit there and be like, "All right, come like April next year, should be pretty clear what's going on." And then like PJ of America is like, "All right, come September next year." We should be able to have some time to figure it out. These other organizations, man, right. like, whoo you just got to, you know, I I guess, or do they get it out of the way now, right? Like, if the PGA Tour announces tomorrow, like, everybody that's playing has a permanent ban, does the PGA of America then just get it out of the way and be like, yep, you're not allowed on the Ryder Cup team? You know, what are they Right, but they, they all do? have to be aligned. So, it's just a massive, every, you got to have so many cooks in the kitchen. Because if I like think, PGA yeah. Tour says like you're out, and then other people are like, yeah, we don't really care. It's like, oh god. Yeah, I wonder if they'll follow the lead of the PGA Tour. You would think that's what would happen, but they could just not. They can do whatever they want. Whatever. But it they all depends want. on what kind of questions they want to answer. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. It'll be very, it'll be very interesting, obviously, and that's going to go on this weekend. I'll give it a watch. I'll throw it on YouTube and just kind of check. To be honest with you, I don't. I don't know if that makes me like complicit or a bad person, but like, kind of want to see what's going on with this thing. You're canceled. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What you guys are? I don't. Watch yeah. It? What's the and that's a good question. What the what's the media presence going to be? Are there guys going over there? Are the are the Danny Rappaport's and Dylan DeChairs going there? Check it so. out. Especially if Phil if Phil plays. What's well, in? I think people are going over there for sure. Yeah. It'll Definitely. be an interesting thing to. You guys like, tell me to you're not going to watch. Nobody's going to watch. I'm going to watch. Yeah, I'll watch. Right, I, sure. I, right. I hope there's going to be like clips of it on social media so I can like watch that. I'm not going to sit there and watch the whole thing. I don't really do that with any golf tournament. You're going to follow Live Golf on Twitter? Nah. Do they have a Twitter account? I don't know. I think Probably they do. do. Here's gotta gotta that's a weird strategy. spot. Yeah. Do we like? Are we wrong? Are we are we bad people if we follow them on Twitter? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think. Here's you breaking news. 18 seconds ago. <clears throat> On July 12th, Webb <clears throat> will release its first images. Oh. July 12th? That's a day. That's a day to keep on your calendar, folks. The first images of, of what are they? What were they calling it? Like unfolding the universe or something like that. <laughs> Just completely giving answers to things that we never had the answers to. Now, here's the thing. I want to I set your guys' expectations onto what that image it's might gonna be. It's going to be super <clears throat> lame. Lame because we watched, like I just watched the movie The Martian last night again. An amazing movie to just watch, sit on the couch and watch, by the way. Mm -hmm. Fucking fantastic. If 
We hey. see everything. We know. We've seen it. I mean, you can watch fucking Gardens of the Galaxy and watch guys bend time and fucking little raccoons fly in fucking spaceships. But this is real stuff. So that's not going to get you off. If you saw if there's, an if HD there's not picture of like big headed gray aliens giving us the finger in those pictures. Oh, you did not have that type of fucking attitude when we had fucking Dr. James, whatever his name was. Smith? Was it Smith? Dr. Smith. Eric well, that's Smith. Because, that's because I'm a coward. Right. Okay? You didn't tell him to go fucking shove your two fucking fingers up his asshole and say, I want to see. I mean, that's what he, he gave us the double bird. I, I, there, if I see an HD picture of the galaxy for the first time, that's pretty fucking awesome. Go outside at night. Look at the stars. Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being me. I'm being stupid because these people put so much work into this, and I'm afraid that people are going to be like me. That the public is going to be like me. They're going to put these photos out, and people are going to be like, "That just looks like another Milky Way picture that I've been looking at since grade school." It's aliens or bust, dude. It's aliens <laughs> or bust. Come on, I mean, dude. Come on, man. Just, yeah. You know, or something like at least something Life that's uh, some bread breadcrumbs on the way to aliens you know what i mean like that we're finding but it, if it's just here's a you know how they do those dumbass fucking pictures it looks like it was on a, a a desktop computer in like 1981 of like the and you're just like all right i mean just I, if they come up with one of those and then dr eric smith super nice guy has to go through an entire podcast to explain why that's cool i'm out it is fucking so stupid that we live in a society where they put in all this work, they build this stuff, they send it out there. It's capturing things that we have never seen before. The entire human race has never seen before. And they'll put it on Twitter and they'll tweet it out and someone will respond with an L. And that'll be it. L and ratio. And people will be like, oh, shit. And that's it. Fucking all psychotic. that work just to get burned on a reply on Twitter. <laughs> What's that? What, what's that thing going on, Trent? That we were talking about the other day that we that we're all dead because of the black oh, hole. PFT had tweeted. Um, PFT commenter tweeted that in 2016, when we when something happened with the hadron collider, we turned it tur- on. We turned it on. I don't know. You flip a switch and it turns on. That it ripped open a black hole, and ever since 2016, each person has individually been living their version of heaven or hell. Nope. <laughs> I did get hired. I got hired in 2016, so that would make sense. So so this has kind of been my heaven of like this everything I wanted. <clears throat> you know, it just kind of adds up. Kinda what were you doing in 2016, out. Lurch? This might be your hell. <laughs> <laughs> things have. It feels hospital. like things have accelerated in terms of their um, craziness since 2016. So I guess um, I kind of looked into it like you would never know, I guess, yeah. that no. we all that, that it ripped open a black hole because it would just like. Well, if people knew we wouldn't in. be having this conversation. It'd be right. You know, you can't like PFT Collins says that. It's like, all right. Wouldn't a black hole too, doesn't it like, wouldn't it like smash us all into pieces by the, like the weight of the gravity? I think it'd be, I don't know. I don't think that we would know that we were in it. Like there's like all these but theories we're not about black it. holes. I think we'd just be like destroyed. I don't think it's like. Right, we be might like have been. We might have been. We're just continuously yeah. living in on like a exterior like, life form. Yeah, like if you're in a shark's like stomach, you're not in it. Like you're dead. The shark ate you. Like it's right. over. We could be dead. So that I feel like if we're in a black hole, it's over. We're hundred percent over. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's the argument. Yeah. It's like we're living in our own heaven, or we're like dead. But here's the other thing: is that I think black holes are so that you you, you can't. Um, you don't know what's in them. People think there's like planets and galaxies within there. They think that there's legitimately galaxies within black holes. Right. And that you just can't see them. Like they've swallowed up massive areas of the solar systems around us and that they're just now in there. And I'm sure like gravity and all that. Stuff. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You want to talk about how I don't know anything. I don't know anything about black holes. So Scientists much, don't know anything about black holes. That's how much I know. They're black holes. It's like they literally suck in and delete and and keep invisible any information about what goes in there did you see how really stress me out did you see how like there's all these meteors that could hit us and they're just starting to uncover them because like with past technology you couldn't see them in these dark spots so like for years upon years upon years we didn't think that there was any chance of any of these meteors hitting us because we just didn't have the technology to see the ones that were coming from areas that we just didn't have access to seeing and now we're just they're tracing their paths from 
they're tracing their past from like when we should have been tracking them thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago. And they're seeing that like they're just could possibly hit us. <laughs> it's just crazy. Like ones that I come like, from behind the sun. I feel sun, like, I feel you like just the can't room's see getting smaller. I need you to just like, can't yeah, see I the one coming from behind the sun. You can't see it. ones coming from behind the sun. It could be within like a day and it's just over. Let's get I mean, one just hit. I mean, why do you think the dinosaurs are gone? One just hit them. Smoked us in the Gulf of Mexico. And and it wasn't it was even that over. big. It wasn't even that big. No. I need a glass of water. Yeah, I need. We gotta get a new topic. Is that? <laughs> need a glass of water. G four. We could talk about a new topic. G four. I'd love is, to talk about G four. Is your dad golf obsessed? Probably. In need of an outfit refresh? Probably. Spending Father's Day on the green? Probably. Then you're in luck. This year, our friends at G four are offering a limited edition Father's Day collection for the occasion. This ends very soon. You gotta or, or you gotta order it by. June 8th, which is tomorrow if you're listening. The capsule includes exclusive G4 shoes, including the best-selling Gallivanter, which we wear all the time, three different hat styles, and more. I'm wearing a cool G4 hat. If you really want to win dad over through um, through really anything, but you can win him over through a, a monogram golf bag to set him up in style. Quantities are limited, so shop now and order by June 8th, which is tomorrow. That will guarantee delivery by Father's Day. Go to g4.com slash four. Shop the capsule and get 10% off your first order. That's g4.com slash four. Shop the capsule. Get 10% off your first order. Three different styles of cool hats. Um, the best-selling Gallivanter. You can get a monogram golf bag to set them up in style. That's g4.com slash four. 10% off. Dad's Father's Day. Much more positive and cooler um, than asteroids or comets uh, ending humanity. I mean, that's uh, Armageddon. I mean, what would they... What would Don't they look do? up. Did you guys watch Don't Look Up? Yeah, I saw yeah, Don't man. Look Up. It's a nightmare. Yeah, it's a, like a laugh Trent, in your face comedy it? nightmare. I mean, it is not. What? Did you end up watching Don't Look Up? I did, yeah. <sighs> that last scene is something. Too much. <laughs> it is. It really is something. It's probably one of the worst scene scenes sucks. in movie history when it comes to just reality hitting you in the face of being like, we're nothing. and The just, whole time, too. You're like, no, we've got a real problem. we got a real problem here, people. Nobody does anything about it. Absolute nightmare. Leave. Well, who was the girl at the dead. French Open that said we have 1,300 days left? What the fuck was that about? She ran onto that? the court and she just on her yeah. on her fucking chest it said like 1,326 days left. <laughs> fuck. I mean, that's between ominous. the live tour, we got hit it hard here, boys. You oh. know, um, <laughs> I want to say something. So I had this guy. I was like scrolling through Instagram and and um, I saw this dude that had drawn. He painted something for Dave during the unboxings. I remember because I used to edit all the unboxing the, the night that he would do it. I remember like just picking out all the best things and then I would make a highlight reel. And one of them was like Dave sitting on this throne and I think he had Stella in his hand and he had like a fucking crown on. And I and I just saw someone painting it um, on Instagram reels and I followed the person. This guy, Tim Smith. And like, you know, I just started following him for the past month. And then he messaged me like, hey, man, would love to do something for you. Like, would love to like paint something for you. So I have this perfectly perfect spot above my couch to put a painting. And I struggled for like a week of like, what the fuck do you put up there? Like we try and do like farmhouse style stuff. We've got browns and whites and whatever. You don't know like what to, you don't want to put like a picture of the city. Like it's like cliche of like lame. new york and then it's kind of like, like we live like kind of by like a lighthouse in fire island like is the ferries right here like did you want to do that because then like you have the story of like the lighthouse is right there and i thought that was whatever so then i'm like i don't just fucking make it golf like i like they're some of the best views in the world are golf so i settled down on um the seventh hole at pebble beach there's one particular picture that i found online where it's like from this angle where like just the seventh holes on the bottom and then all just the landscape in the back with all the water and the sunset coming down. Hopefully it comes out good. He's doing it. He was like tagging me yesterday. But my question to you guys would be like, if you had to pick one, what would your picture be to have someone paint? And I actually thought it was funny that I picked seven because it's my least favorite hole that I've played. It's my favorite hole to look at. I've yet to hit the green three times. I, um, I, I struggle with this just in general. Like, um, decorating my apartment or like what to put on the walls. If you go to my apartment in Manhattan right now, there's nothing on the walls because I just don't know what to put up. So I don't, that's a good one. You picked a good one, but I don't, I don't know what my answer would be. Like to have someone paint. I'll say, uh, links Jim sent me for my apartment, which is always my backdrop when I'm at my apartment, a big like canvas 
photo he took drone of like the 18th hole at Pinehurst number two, um, which is great. It's got obviously uh, some sentimental value. That's where we beat Kevin Kisner on that green, Payne Stewart, the whole deal. So it kind of ties a lot of things together. Um, but in terms of somebody painting something, I'd probably go something similar, maybe something from St. Saint, Saint Charles, our hometown with the family in the Midwest and like farmland meeting like suburbia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's kind of like our – our ethos back there, I feel like. I don't know, something like that. If you could do this that. This is what I sent him. I sent Whoa. him that Ooh. to try and paint. So we'll see if he can paint that. I mean, he seems nuts. Yeah. Oh, he, wow. um, he said he's going to do it like in his own style, which I kind of like. Like it's not going to be so much like – exactly like that i always want the story I was, I was talking to trent i like you want a story when you show someone something like oh this dude from instagram made this and fucking he painted this with his own fucking hands like that's sex shit i love that yeah i agree. Being a painter how do you fucking draw man? <laughs> what to be able to Painting's see that impossible. to be able to impossible. see oh i'd say lurch is probably the worst drawer in the group i would say i don't yeah, know why yeah, yeah no, no, no. I, I would run with that I would say I can't. I can't. On draw. the artistic skills, I'm like, yeah. Lurch had to play the trombone. Remember, they just yeah. That's, the that's kind of why he's a walking trombone. We did like an art class. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, that's horrible, man. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> that's a cactus, dude. Ooh, I would bad. say my level is pretty similar, though. <laughs> That's I'm pretty bad level. too. I'm pretty bad too. But I would guess Lurch, you're a little worse. That'd be my the guess. Craziest, yeah, yeah. My mom's like world class. She's really an insane painter, and I'm just paints all the time. Paints all the time. Wow. Loves what kind of painting canvas. is it? Like, is it like uh, loves watercolors? Okay. Abstract. It's, is it like uh, landscapes no, she, or yeah, is it a like, lot of landscapes? She no loves portraits. I'll, I'll take a picture. I'll send you you boys or I'll. I'll you know, she doesn't have Instagram or anything, but I'll tell, I'll put up my mom's yeah, photos. You gotta, get, you gotta get her in the 21st century here. She's uh, she's good at it. Um, all right, boys, we about done here. Trent and I got this cascada. We got to go to this uh, Barstool Classic hang for a little bit. Yep. Wrap this puppy 100%. up, and then we're on the road. Make sure people go buy the uh, tickets for the live show at the Wilbur Boston Monday U.S. Open. Kirk Minahan, Kevin Kisner. It's gonna be a great time. Uh, other than that, we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll be back uh, end of the week. Hopefully, we have a guest. Maybe we'll try to get Billy Horschel on. Talk and see what happens with the live golf. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard.